It's Harrison here from Macris Industries. We're doing an install video, I'm gonna highlight some of our lights. I'm here with Frank and Jeff, owners of a 2005 38 Rampage, and they're gonna go and walk us through the install of their MIU 30s that we're gonna put on the back and on the sides of their boat. Uh, Frank, can you tell us a little bit about the boat? I bought the boat two years ago. It came with some underwater lights. You can see the remnants of the holes here. We have four underwater lights, a competitor's light. Uh, we weren't happy with the product, so we decided to take them out. Uh, we glassed over the surface here, a uh, completely smooth surface, so we're starting from ground zero. And uh, we're choosing to put in Harrison's new lights here. We're going to give it a try. Yeah, we're going to walk through the whole installation. It's going to be a great, great how-to video for everyone out there uh, wondering if they can do it themselves. Super simple. Luckily, Jeff's already prepped a lot of the boat. He was nice enough to have everything ready for him. We came We brought the lights. Can you tell him quick how we prepped? Uh, basically what I did, just took a grinding wheel and sanded the, the boat paint that was below the water line here. Wanted to make sure we didn't take off and as much of the gel coat as we could. Uh, but after we used the grinder, grinding wheel, we uh, used a sander, made it nice and smooth, and then cleaned it off with some acetone. So it's a completely smooth surface, ready for the lights. Once you go through with the acetone, just to clean all the remnants off, wipe it one last time with alcohol. That leaves the surface super clean, prep for the lights. We're gonna go through it right now. We're gonna show how to template everything, where to drill your holes, and how quick and easy it is to mount these. All right? Jeff already laid out the basics of where we wanna put the lights. And what we're gonna do now is measure precisely. This is a template, you can get this template uh, on our website printed out. Uh, I obviously trace it onto a piece of cardboard because it makes it easier. Uh, you can print it on printer paper, cut it out, and then use it for yourself or trace it onto something more rigid like this. Uh, it has a mark for where the wire hole actually goes. So what we did is we ahead of time measured, but I wanna show you how, how to lay everything out. So everything's even. So you use your template. Put it on the boat, line it up. We have some uh, some marks that we put. Then all you're going to do is trace. Trace around the light. And mark your wire location. So now you'll have the outline of your light here. What we're going to do when we mount these is take some tape and trace three eighths of an inch away from this line. And that's going to give you a little bit of a gap for your adhesive as sort of a fillet um, to really seal the edge of the light when you press it up against the back of the boat. So what we have here is a hole, a, uh, a mark for the hole that's going to go through the boat. And then we're going to mask around it. We'll show you that. And then we'll go into mounting on how to mount them. It's super quick. Super simple, so stay with us. So what we're gonna do is, using the line that we traced, we're gonna go and tape about 3 eighths of an inch away, including the corners. Um, not super hard, Jeff's gonna show you how he does it. You can go a little closer than that, a little closer, a little closer, yeah, that's probably good. All right, now at this point we have everything laid out. We have the outline, we have it masked, we have a, a spot for our through hole. You're gonna start with a pilot bit and we're gonna drill right through the boat carefully. Now you wanna check beforehand, which we have, that there's nothing on the inside of the boat you're gonna hit. No fuel tanks, no pumps, no hoses, no electrical lines. Make sure it's all free and clear. So when you go through for the first time, there's no surprises. Now with any luck, when you drill through your boat, there's no water or leakage. We have seen boats where we've drilled through and there's been moisture weeping out of them, which is uh, not the best thing in the world. Uh, so luckily, this is nice, clean, fresh surface. Like we said, these, these were uh, a freshly glassed hole where the old lights were. Um, so we have a nice, clean surface to mount to. 38, that's 377, a little bigger. Yeah, that's fine. You could probably even go a little bigger than that. You'd use the 404. 
So once you have your pilot hole, you're going to use that as a guide and you're going to use the correct size bit for the ferrule on the back of the light. So the ferrules are a little bit more than 3 eighths of an inch, so we're using a, uh, a size 404 bit, which will be more than enough. It's good to have these a little bit oversized because it gives you some wiggle room on aligning the light perfectly. And it also puts a little bit of sealant in the hole around the entire wire ferrule. So now we're going to go through with a bigger bit. Now if you notice, Jeff was doing a good job keeping the drill square to the transom. So you want to make sure you're not drilling at an angle, because that's going to make it hard to get the light to sit flat against the boat. You want to keep everything square and flush. Now at this point we're going to take a light, and we're going to test fit everything. Dry fit everything, make sure it fits, um, so you have no surprises, because as soon as you break out the 4200, <coughs> you don't want to have it going everywhere. He's going to go on the full wires. Yeah, I'll So, this is what you want to see before you even start mounting. You want to have your light. We pre mask these lights um, ahead of time. So, the only exposed surface is the edge, this chamfer. And then you want to have everything around the light masked as well. At this point, you're ready to go. Um, this is when you'd be ready to start mounting. What we're going to do is we're going to prep all of them, get them all ready to go, and then we'll come back and show you how to mount this one. These we're doing especially to show because we're mounting them without any of the brackets. We have a lot of guys asking how to mount without the, uh, the carbon shoes on the end. So these we're going to walk through the whole, per uh, the whole process of mounting these, getting them on, getting them glued, holding them tight, and then letting everything cure peeling the tape away and showing the final install. Alright. So at this point I'm going to talk you through the actual process of installing the light on the back of the boat with the 4200. This is the most crucial part of the installation. The prep is incredibly important, but doing this right will give you a very long lasting, super durable, watertight installation. So what Jeff is doing right now is he's tracing out the back of the light with 4200, using a nice, generous, thick bead because you want a uniform, basically, lamination of the light against the back of the boat. So you want no voids in the 4200 along the perimeter. The goal is when you press the light against the back of the boat, all that adhesive will squeeze out evenly all around the perimeter of the light. So Jeff's going to butter up the back of that. It takes about a third of a tube of 4200 to do an MIU 30 and obviously less to do a 15. Um, we suggest having a little bit extra on hand. You can always return it if you, you buy a tube and you don't use it and don't open it. You can always return it to them. For this install, I believe we had, we went through two tubes, uh, but we had three just in case we needed an extra. So now he's got the back buttered up. He's lining it up, checking that everything's going to go smoothly. You know, we dry fit everything so that there's no issues when you come to actually glue it on. You don't want to have any surprises when you're pressing it up against the back of the boat and you have glue and it's going to be a fairly permanent installation. Now you use nice even pressure on the face of the light. I typically use my knuckles or the palms of my hands. You want to have nice sort of gentle but firm pressure across the back of the light. And what we got here was essentially perfect when it comes to install. You want a good uniform squeeze out of adhesive all around the perimeter of the light. You don't want any areas where there might be a little void or a gap and you can see all along the top, bottom, and side edges of this light, there's a good squeeze out. So Jeff's just being really careful going around, checking all the corners, 
And basically what you do is you leave it there, let it sit for you know 10 or 15 seconds and kind of find its home. It'll hold itself in place. And then I come back and I give it an additional press. You'll hear a little bit of air maybe come out. If there's any sort of void in the 4200, you might hear some air. That's a good thing. It means you're getting a more uniform seal across the back of the light to the hull itself. So you essentially just press yourself around, make sure there's good uniformity, and then let it sit. And then you're going to come back when you're ready, uh, sort of mentally prepare yourself to clean around the outside of the light. So Jeff's going to take his finger and he's going to run a nice clean bead all around the perimeter of the light. At this point, I start doing the second light. We were kind of in production mode now, just trying to get the lights on the boat as quickly as possible. So here you can see I'm buttering up the back of the port side light. We did five lights on this boat, three across the transom, one on either side, wrapped up the side. I work a little bit faster just because I've done this a, a handful of times, obviously. I, I do the whole, the whole thing that Jeff did. I butter it up, I line it up, and here you'll see I do it kind of quickly. I just press it right in. And here I'm using my knuckles, good uniform pressure on the light, and there you can see the squeeze out. Good squeeze all around the light. That's what you're looking for, just like that. If you look at the left side of that light, you'll see there's a uniform, basically, bead of epoxy. Now here I go around with my finger and smooth it out as well as possible. You want a nice, smooth bead. You can use a tool. Sorry for getting in the way of the camera, but you can use a tool to make an even more professional bead. I mean, the lights are underwater and they typically get painted up too anyway, so it doesn't need to be perfect if you're not super clean with 4200. This is a good shot of uh, a t-shirt. And here you go. Now that I'm out of the way, you can see nice clean seal. At this point, you're better off just leaving it. You have, you know, you're tempted to want to keep you know, touching it and playing with it and messing with it, but you're better off just leaving it. Maybe give it one more press, make sure it's all the way against the boat. You can see I use actually the kind of knuckle of my forefinger to give a nice clean uniform bead. If you look at the top seal, the top edge of that light, it's super uniform, nice and clean. One thing you can do is take a piece of tape now at this point and just tack it uh, on the top of the light, basically from the face up above to the hull of the boat, just if you're worried about the light sagging, depending on the conditions, whether it's warm, humid, dry, cool, the 4200 will cure faster or slower. So sometimes it's really cheap insurance to take a few inches of tape and just run a piece from the face of the light up to the hull of the boat, basically over that seam you just created uh, without touching it, uh, just to hold the light from sagging. Because in some cases, if it's curing really slowly, the lights can sag, you know, just a tiny bit. And now at this point, you're essentially done. We did not elect to tape the lights up in place because the 4200 was curing fairly quickly. 4200 cures with heat and humidity. A little bit of moisture actually helps it cure. And it was a warm, fairly humid day when we were doing this. So it was curing pretty quickly. So we didn't tape them up in place. But like I said, it is very cheap insurance if you are worried about them moving at all. Just put a piece of tape up there, it takes two seconds, and you're done. You can always go back and press them one more time just to make sure that they're fully pressed against the back of the boat. Jeff is running his finger around that one one last time to make a nice clean bead. But as soon as you're done and these lights cure and you peel the masking, it's going to look super professional anyway. And then all you have to do is paint up and around the light, which we're going to show you right now coming up. So now we're going to show you the very last step of finishing this light install on the Rampage. Jeff is going around and painting up to every light with some bottom paint. You can see we removed the border tape that was defining the border of the light, but we left the face tape on the lens. 
on the light so that we don't get any bottom paint on the actual lens. That's the last thing you're gonna peel off. A lot of boats won't need bottom paint if they are freshwater boats or if they're on lifts down in Florida, but this boat lives in New England, so it gets bottom paint. So what you're gonna do is paint all the way up to the light, up and onto the 4200, and then all you're gonna do is let that dry for a minute, come in, we're gonna show you how to peel that, and that'll be the end of the install. We did all five lights this exact same way. We're just gonna show you the one. We're just gonna peel the face tape off the light once the bottom paint is dry, and that's it. You're done, boat goes in the water. Lights should be wired up and good to go. Now this is the last little bit. This is sort of the icing on the cake, the part that everyone's kind of waiting for to see the light when it's all installed and done and clean and no tape or anything over it. This is why it's important to mask the face of the light. You basically can take this, peel the tape off, and you're left with a perfect, clean, brand new, ultra professional install like nothing else on the market. And there you go. That's it. This boat has five MIU-30s, so we did it for all five, three on the back, two on the sides. And we're going to follow up this video with a photo shoot over the summer and some video showing the resulting output from the installation. Check out more info on our website, www.macrosindustries.com, for ordering different models and anything else you might need.